3D printing metal in your garage. It's actually going to be possible. Thanks to my buddy, Matt here. Hey, Matt. That's what we're working on, Joel. Oh man. Matt is here at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival and he's got scrap labs and he pulled me over because he's like, do you want to see something cool? Thought you might like it. Matt was the founder of Exact Metal. That's right. Metal 3D printing. And Matt had an idea. What was it? Yeah, my idea was to make metal 3D printing more accessible, right? So Exact Metal introduced the lowest cost metal 3D printer in the world in 2017 that was $100,000, right? A lot of money. Which is great for small to mid-sized enterprises. Okay. It, it gets a lot more people in the industry, but now we're trying to make it so that individuals can actually afford metal 3D printing. We want metal 3D printing to be for makers, for hobbyists, for enthusiasts, um, anybody who has ideas and wants to print them. And so Scrap Labs, based in Boulder, Colorado, is actually trying to build the lowest cost metal 3D printer in the world at under $20,000. So. Now we're talking under 20 for consumer level garage yeah. level, like yeah. makers, right? So we're really trying to hit the high level uh, performance point at basically a low level price that's available to consumers. So $20,000 is our upper limit on the price. And we really want to make it something that people get high quality metal 3D printing at a price that they can actually afford. High quality metal printing. Like when we talk about it, because we've worked with companies like EOS, yeah. things cost a lot. The, the process is very involved and you have to be careful with the materials because they can, they, it can be explosive in nature, right? Exactly, some of them, yeah. Some, some of them, so we're, yep. we're typically talking about titanium, right? and you're not. Yeah, so titanium and aluminum are the asterisks. They have basically a reactive tendency to react with oxygen. Stainless steels, tool steels, they don't. So it's a little bit safer to actually handle those powders. You still don't want to breathe them in, but sure. that's just an average respirator, which people use for you know handling nylon powders and anything else that would be volatile. Oh, so if I was like painting my house, and I had a respirator on, I'd be good to run the machine too. Very similar. Sweet. I can do that. Now the machine itself is not here. You recently found out about your booth like just a couple days ago. You yep. brought parts and the machine too. I want to talk a little bit about the patent because you're currently yeah. filing a patent, but that's but the goal is still open source, right? Yeah, so the goal is a hybrid approach where we basically um, protect the IP such that people can't just go and knock us off immediately, but at the same time, enable people to use it for uh, their own personal use. So the, the patents, uh, the open source nature of it would be towards individuals who want to make their own or want to be able to basically contribute to the project and make the, the product better. Um, but at the oh. same time, not selling for commercial use. Basically. I see, I see. Yeah. So then we're still talking about people being able to license the patent in effect. Yep. But for people here at the Rocky Mountain Show, like it could be in the next couple of years, one of them or two of them might have a Scrap Labs open source built metal additive machine. Exactly, that's the idea, yep. Now the quality is the most important thing when we talk about metal additive and the quality is brought to you on a build plate this size, right? This is the build plate of the machine. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, yeah, no, I'm no, not going to say that. <laughs> what kind of, is this just like a Mike 6 piece of metal that? Yeah, so that's just ground uh, tool steel. Tool steel, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. And then this goes in the machine, yep. and the parts come off of it. And yep. the parts, let's, let's start just going parts, man, because this yep. is cool. Look at this. This is. High quality stuff. This man. is super high quality stuff. Yeah. Like, when we go to a, like, like Form Next, a yep. big trade show, and you have exactly. these companies doing metal additive, yep. this is what they're showing off. Yeah. Some of them larger, right? Yep. But, but again, it's this level of quality that they're showing off. Yep. What metal is this? So that's 316 stainless steel. So super versatile print, uh, very easy to print as well. Uh, also super um, accessible. So you can get 316 stainless steel in a lot of different It's places. pretty ubiquitous, right? Yeah. Like it's everywhere, it's yep. everywhere. It's kind of like the PLA of, of yeah, metal. It's the print. PLA of metal additive. Yep. Now this is not a polished piece. Yep. This is polished, That's right? polished, yep. So those are some earrings that I 3D printed for my wife. Um, you might recognize them. They're available on Thingiverse. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but I 3D printed them in metal and now they look like real jewelry. They're, they're hand Well, they are real. They are real jewelry. They are genuine real jewelry. This is stainless steel. Um, I think it looks just as good as, as uh, sterling silver or something. But yeah, this is something that I printed in a matter of minutes. What? Um, the polishing took a little bit longer, but you know, that's, that's par for the course, that's perfection. So yeah, but you know, you, if you want to open an Etsy shop and buy one of these printers and you know, just start printing jewelry, yeah. you can. Just like with what uh, the bamboo and the Prusa machines and people have farms of those to start Etsy shops, yep. you now have the opportunity for these people to have shops with metal prints and metal exactly. parts and offering metal things. And that's really that's opens huge. up the floodgates, yeah. And people could do this ish with CNC if they had proper CNC machines to, yeah. to machine metals. But sure. metal additive has always been that holy grail of home use. Like it's always been that thing that 
no one could figure out the proper way to do it yeah, at a wow. scale that people could afford. Right. And here comes Matt, the founder yeah. of Exact Metal with an idea. Yeah, a lot of people have tried <laughs> and a lot of people have failed. I, I have the experience to tell me that this isn't gonna fail. This isn't my first rodeo. I've built these machines before. I know how they work. I know how to achieve the quality and to keep the prices low. And so I fully intend to be able to do that with Scrap Labs and I think it's gonna be exciting. This, this is a part that I think really demonstrates the abilities of what you're going for and how it's gonna to relate to consumers because yep. this isn't a piece of jewelry. This is actually a metal part interacting with a traditionally manufactured part. Exactly. So you've 3D printed threads yep. and you've put something with threading into it. Yes, exactly. Like we're talking now in a, in a garage, people can restore old cars mm -hmm. or possible like personal aircraft yeah. or anything, anything that's metal, right? Yeah. Yeah, people, yeah, a hot water heater, <laughs> sure. You can fix your own hot water tank. Exactly. We've seen a lot of people really excited about restoring old cars because these parts just aren't available anymore. And so to get these things working again, sometimes you have to either make your own or find someone who can. And now you could have an online repository of you know things that are 3D printable for your old Camaro or something that just isn't available anymore, but it's stored digitally forever. Yeah. And so now it works, you know, with uh, chasing threads. You can you know chase it with a tap. Actually, get real functional sealing threads. And um, yeah, you just, I mean, it'd be very difficult to do that on a, on a CNC mill without yeah, absolutely. proper bits and yeah. So. so did you, on this, did you print the threading and then tap it or did you have a whole, and then, okay. Yeah, so I, I printed the actual thread, so they are they are fully formed. Yeah. And then you just chase it with a tap. And the only reason I did that is so that you get a perfect seal on it. So uh, without okay. chasing it, you just get a, a rougher surface, which is mechanically fine. But if you want it to seal, like in the case of a, an air fitting, you basically need to chase it with a tap in order, but the tap's gonna go through a lot easier than if it was just a hole, yeah. because it has less material to remove, right? And so it's a lot less likely to break, it's a little easier to tap. It just gives you kind of like a, a leg up over just like, you know, drilling a hole and tapping it just right. Dude, regular. this is, this is cool. Yeah. Like, like, I think so. Where, where, you think so. We're at a RepRap show and this is where people's passion for this sort of technology emerges. Right. And you see, you see all sorts of really cool things like advancements that people have done themselves. Yeah. And you're, you're coming here at a show with a nondescript booth and being like, hey, in a year or two, you're gonna have metal printers here. Yeah, no, I should say I've benefited a lot from the, the community. So I started metal, th uh, just 3D printing in 2012 when uh, I was in college. Oh, okay. I built a Prusa Mendel V2, just bought the <laughs> kit, built the whole thing, you know, threaded rods and everything. But I was hooked immediately because I could take ideas that were in my head and actually just print them immediately. And that's because somebody open sourced that design and made it available for me to be able to to build one. That is so cool. And so I'm very thankful for that. And that's that's part of the reason why I'm so devoted to the open source hardware movement and being a part of that as well. I really want to pay it forward. I don't really, I'm not here for just the money. I want to build a profitable business so that I can, you know, build a, a product that exists in the market and survives. But I also really want to contribute to the corpus of knowledge that's in the open source uh, hardware space as well. So it's a really big contributor for or reason why I'm, why I'm doing this. That's really cool. Like yeah. building a proper company, but then allowing allowing the technology to benefit humanity in general. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, I really am all about the technology. I know there's gonna be more people that wanna stop by. And, and you know, in the future, if you guys wanna see, I can always fly back out to Denver, come to Boulder and, and see the machine when it's ready, right? Exactly, come check cool. it out, we'd love to show you. People are gonna to wanna to know more about this. So look at the camera right there and tell everybody where they can go to find out more about Scrap Labs. Yeah, so Scrap Labs has a website. It's scraplabs3d.com. And you can go on there and check out what we're up to and subscribe to the newsletter so we can keep you in the loop. I'm going to subscribe. All right. I tend to give my audience high five at the end. You up for it? Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Uh, thanks for watching this far. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for gosh you believe in and metal print all the things. Right? Let's do it. And as always, high five. You want one? Let's go. Yes. Yeah.